Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so sorry, my voice is kind of just vanished. Um, my name is Shell Myth. I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, one of the people who are leading Africa R. Um, and we were meant to be standing here with Dennis. Dennis is just a guy from Nigeria who had the video. Um, he wasn't able to come here because of visa issues, unfortunately. But I'm here to represent. So, um, <clears throat> who are we? Um, at the beginning of this year, someone from r just approached me and asked if I can help um, spread R in Africa, which is something I'd always been hoping to do. Why? One, I've been using R for close to seven, eight years right now. And to me, I always felt R was an easy programming language um, to learn. But then just looking at people out there, there's a lot of unemployment, um, especially where I come from. And it's not because, um, I don't know, it's, People, people don't know where to start, and I've always had the urge to just encourage people, train people to um, learn R, since it's kind of easy. Um, and so, yeah, the first thing we did, I had a very lovely call with um, the big guys at R, just trying to share the vision I would have with them. And um, the first step we did was to look for other people who would help me, and I I got hold of Dennis. One time, even before this came into being, Dennis reached out to me on Twitter and is like, you know what, uh, you use R, I use R, we are from different countries, why don't we come up with a strategy where we can encourage other people to um, learn R? So one of the missions, as you can see from the slides, the first one is to achieve improved, improved representations in these global communities. Um, I remember, and a very big thanks to Dennis, I was not to apply for this conference at all. It's not my fault. I thought it's always, it's a high-end thing that I will never get to. And remember when he told me to apply, I'm like, are you sure? You know we are Africans. Like, how will we ever get there? And he's like, you know what, you, let's write an abstract, let's send. And we, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but we wrote this abstract, like, I think four hours to the deadline. And he told me, also make sure you apply for the diversity scholarship. I'm like, okay, you know what? I tried. If I lose I'll try, if I lose, I won't, it's still okay. But yeah, look at me right now, hanging with the big people. And <laughs> the second thing was, we really needed to strengthen already existing our user groups. So what I've actually come to learn right now is that there were existing our user groups, but we didn't know about them. And so what resulted is that we could have a lot of our user groups springing in the same community just because they don't know each other. Again, what were they doing with these our user groups? We had like two our user groups in Nairobi, but it reached a point where they died. I didn't even know about them. And so when I was doing my research, I remember uh, I reached out to one of them and I was like, why did you even, <clears throat> why did you even um, close your group? He's like, you know what? I tried this, but I didn't get people to work with me, so I just gave up. Um, the other thing is we were trying to foster a collaborative network of gurus, learners, and even package developers from... <clears throat> from Africa. Um, one of the things, as, as I've mentioned, um, many of us did not know about the global RStats community. Actually, I came to learn about RStats one time when I went to a conference and my computer was stolen, and I decided to just use my phone to do stuff, and got, in, got into Twitter, and I was like, wait, hardly we come is on Twitter, wait, oh my god, there's this larger community that was actually so awesome. And then something else, as I've mentioned, lack of awareness about these scholarships, I rem about the conferences. I remember when I now got into this conference, I started telling people, you know what, I'm not any special kind of person. The next conference, please make sure you apply. What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Life will just move on. And then um, people are learning R, but they are not aware of how to apply the skills. Um, and then the education system is a bit lacking. Um, I've done my undergraduate in actual science and um, Masters in Applied Statistics, and even after that, um, uh, I didn't even know what our studio is, and it's not really my fault. Um, but then what I always tell people, you know what, okay, you can't always blame education for not, or lecturers for not training you anything. What are you doing with your life? You can train yourself, right? Like you don't have to always complain you are not taught. The other thing is um, there's a battle between R and Python, especially in Africa, Python is such a big thing. And I remember we still, even now, we still face, why should I learn R instead of Python? But that's always an 
question I don't like answering or an argument I don't like getting involved with. Um, and then most of the employment um, JDs, the job descriptions are prioritized Python over R. So I really thank God I have an amazing job where I get to <clears throat> use R eight, nine, ten hours a day. And I'm able to show people that, you know what, learn R, reason being, I'm paid to do this every day. And it's so simple um, to learn. And then we also have a lot of Python communities and conferences. Like, I don't know if you know about deep learning in Daba. In Daba deep learning in Daba is happening in Nairobi this, this August, and it's a whole Python thing. So we are really hoping um, we are going to have uh, our, our conferences spring up maybe this year, next year. Um, so yeah, we have different um, ideas for our group, the African user group. The first one, we want to adopt adopt and nurture like we want to come up with our user groups but then they'll still be young right we are such a young initiative we started in we started in january we are only six months old and there is a lot of interest in coming up with our user group from different countries but then this is the thing um I'm also new to this. I don't know. I can't answer some questions I, I can't answer because I have no experience. So what are we doing? We want to match up new user groups and existing user groups. For example, if we have a user group in Ghana, Accra, um, we can pair them with a user group in Chicago or we have another user group in another place. So that one, you're able to mentor, they're able to be mentored and to just help them grow up. That's something as a leadership we may not be able to do um, at this point. The other thing we want to do is seek return, uh, remote internships for and jobs for people because there are a lot of people who are skilled um, in Africa but then um, their jobs may be limited and one thing I've realized um, even at my current job right now I am able to work on a project in Nigeria, another project in another country. Why don't we just have people who, I'm very happy by the way, over lunch hour, there's an employment something going on. I'll, I'll be sure to join that. Um, why can't we have people in Africa working remotely? I know most of us here work remotely, right? And it's okay for as long as we have Slack. Something else, um, this was adopted from, I think, Jumping Rivers. It's a while back, it's not updated, but it's very sad for us to see how whitish Africa is. We are hoping by the next time, <laughs> I'm hoping by the next time we come to this conference will have at least more green, um, greener areas. So yeah, we hadn't updated this because we are still in talks um, with different uh, user groups, but we can proudly confirm that um, I think by the time we've started, we've, we've been able to come up with four or five user groups in different cities in different countries, which for us is a very big milestone. We started this by um, just floating a call on Twitter that you know what, if you're an African in an African country and you want to start an user group, just reach out to us. And we got a lot of DMs. I remember like people, some guys in Cairo, Egypt, I got DMs from different people and I was like, you know what, please meet meet this and this, meet up, you guys come up with something, um, a, a meetup group. And we are proud to confirm that they have had, I think, four meetups uh, right now, and we are totally proud. They are just about to launch. So I don't know if you follow us um, at Africa Users on Twitter, we are always talking about launching, launching, launching. But then again, for us, it's not all about launching. It's about uh, consistency, right? There's no need to launch uh, and a user group and then the next month there is nothing. So that's something we are looking at. So these are some of the, <coughs> sorry, these are, these are some of the user groups that exist currently. Some are, are ladies, others are um, just our user groups um, in Africa. Again, this is not updated because we are trying, we are trying to come up with, we are having talks with almost everyone um, in Africa. And then um, <coughs> this is my best part of the presentation. Um, so I learned how to use Hugo. <laughs> I learned how to use Hugo and um, and uh, blog down. Yeah, and you know what? I, d I told people I'm the one to develop this website. But then it reached a point where I got so many errors and I kind of gave up. Um, it was running locally, so I'm proud. I'm very proud. Uh, we are developing this website, the three of us. So we are three leads. There's me, I'm based in Nairobi. Um, Denise Irorera is based in Nigeria. And then there's Ahmado. He's based in Senegal. So. We came up with this. It's still new, but you can look for it through that URL. Um, one of the 
one of the goals of this is to make sh we want to have to use it as an avenue for learning resources so if you're an african who wants to learn r um, you can just go to our website and look for any course and um, just showcase different things that people are doing in africa something else is set up r clubs in campuses since if the curriculum will not work with you or for you it's time for us to help ourselves so why don't we come up with different r user clubs in campuses. Something we're really uh, <laughs> struggling with right now is uh, money. Everyone struggles with money, I hope. Um, so we're struggling. We are just trying to talk to different people. And let me tell you, especially in Nairobi, for us to have like a meetup on one Saturday a month, we only need like 60, 70 to maybe $100. And that will cater for a venue and give people refreshments. The trainers are not really paid. And I'm hoping that it's the same like with different places. So it's not really much. Something else we really are looking for are venues. So just in case you're here and you have affiliations in Africa, people who can help us, like give us venues once a month, please look for me. And then this is one thing we really want, an African Grand Conference um, 2020. So. If you have ideas on where we could start with this, please reach out to us. Again, we would also want some of you to fly to Africa. If it's, if it's very hard for us to come here, then please come. I think it will be easy for you. We'll take you to see wild animals and beautiful things in Africa. Um, so we've done a lot so far, but I think our major highlight is um, having our first East African Saturday Kampala, uh, and it was really nice. Please follow us at Africa Users for more for photos. So yeah, this is just some of the things we've been able to do. We work with Zindi. Zindi is the African Car Gold. It's a website that hosts uh, competitions. We were able to launch two user groups. That's Nairobi R and um, Dar es Salaam. That's the Kampala Saturday. Um, Data Science Africa is a conference that mostly engages in Python. So I was really able to tell them, please, 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 can we get like even 30 minutes to just, just introduce R? It's some of you, most of you will know it's a very dangerous ground to tread on. You know, you're the only R user in a swarm of Pythonistas. So, but we achieved it and it was really, really nice. And yes, I'm done. <laughs> um, questions? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask a simple one. <laughs> Is that how you ask questions in French? Yeah. Oh, I'm learning. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, you are the expert on Africa here, so there's no way I can make a hard question. Um, have you tried, uh, for the money, have you tried contacting uh, the R Consortium? Uh, for funds? Okay, yeah, so that's something we are, I think there's a big um, application coming up. I don't know whether it's in August. So the good thing with leadership is that there are different people involved with different things. So that's something that Dennis is working on and yeah, it's in the pipeline. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I had the same question about the R Consortium. Uh, I'm Thibaut from the R Epidemics Consortium. I think we've been in, in touch on Twitter. Uh, it's not so much a question as it is uh, like, like just a heads up and, and maybe hear your thought about it. Uh, the humanitarian sector is uh, has been changing recently in terms of data analytics, and this is a place where R is is pretty much like getting some becoming something. Uh, it's it's you know running the routine analysis for the ongoing Ebola outbreak in in DRC, and there's I've seen a lot of enthusiasm there for uh, people to like run workshops and courses. So I don't know if that's something you've considered, but maybe like um, bring, like reaching a hand to the humanitarian sector, be it WHO or MSF or others, because uh, there's a bit of money there. And there's a lot to do in like useful capacity building there, and there's probably some partnerships that could be done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, those are some of the suggestions we want because we are still new. So you can look for us. Um, just give us ideas. We are really welcoming ideas from everyone. So yeah, thank you.